we will be hearing from Dr. Susie Lee. So Dr. Lee received her BA from Harvard and her MD from McGill University in Montreal. She then completed her neurology residency at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City and her behavioral neurology fellowship at the UCSF Memory and Aging Center. Dr. Lee is now an assistant professor here and her research focuses on neuroimaging in atypical dementias such as corticobasal degeneration and frontotemporal dementia. Her interests also include understanding genetic susceptibility in atypical dementias. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Thanks, Christine, and thank you to all of you who have come out here on a rainy Saturday. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more um, in detail about some of the things that Dr. Rabinovich and Dr. Miller brought up, and uh, specifically focusing on understanding corticobasal degeneration. So first of all, I'm sure most of you have wondered, why is it called corticobasal degeneration? Well, um, the reason is, let's see, is this working? Let's see, where's the laser pointer? Um, the reason is that uh, the, okay, great. Um, that the regions involved are the cerebral cortex, which is the surface of the brain, um, that uh, is what we also know as the gray matter, and also the basal ganglia are involved in de degeneration. The basal ganglia are important for movement, so uh, that's kind of what's embedded in the name. And CBD was first described as a movement disorder with symptoms such as limb rigidity or stiffness, tremor, what's called an alien limb syndrome, in which um, there's difficulty kind of uh, telling the arm or the leg what to do. Um, difficulty performing a learned sequence of movements, uh, which is also called apraxia, and sometimes there's sustained muscle contractions, which we call dystonia. So um, really sort of stiffness in the arm that seems to be sort of in, stuck in one position. Uh, finally, there's also postural instability, so if somebody is knocked off balance, it can be very difficult for them to um, maintain uh, standing. So <clears throat> Dr. Rabinovich talked a lot about the tau pathology, so I won't go this into this into too many details, but the other aspect of understanding disease is from the pathological point of view. And when we say pathology here in this context, what we're really talking about is the study of disease of uh, brain cells or neurons under the microscope. And so both CBD and progressive supranuclear palsy, or PSP, have tau protein deposits, which is what uh, the two diseases have in common. And the reason we can even distinguish these diseases under the microscope is that there are different shapes and um, shapes of the tau protein. So here you can see that the tau protein under the microscope is stained in brown, and different shapes are associated with different conditions, and that's how we can di differentiate them under the microscope. Also, the proteins in CBD versus PSP occur in different locations in the brain, which is another way we can make our classification. So I'm going to talk a little bit um, about um, how we use all this information, you know, when uh, people come in to uh, study the disease and research, you know, we, you know that we collect a lot of information at the bedside, we do examinations, you get memory testing and cognitive testing, um, MRI scans, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how all this integrate, uh, information integrates in a very powerful way to help us understand these diseases better. So when I refer to clinical pathological studies, um, what I'm talking about is um, uh, comparing the disease that we think that somebody has during life at the bedside uh, compared to the disease that they actually have under the microscope. So uh, Dr. Rabinovich referred to this earlier, but only about th historically only about 35 to 50 percent of patients suspected to have CBD at the bedside actually ended up having CBD pathology in the brain. So because of this, people have um, created this distinction in the nomenclature. So corticobasal syndrome is what we refer to as the disease at the bedside that we can diagnose with symptoms and examination, and corticobasal degeneration is really the brain pathology under the microscope. So it's very confusing um, uh, unless you sort of make that distinction. So um, people have started to do that uh, when they write about research studies. So here you can see the various studies where they looked at 13 people with CBS defined during life, seven had CBD at autopsy. This next study of 21 people with CBS, about half of them had CBD at autopsy, but the other half here had PSP. And this is just to sort of exemplify that 
PSP is a very close cousin of CBD. On the other side, looking from the other perspective, here are 19 people who would, were defined to have CBD at, 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 with pathology, but during life, five of these people had corticobasal syndrome and eight had PSP syndrome. And I'm not gonna talk too much about PSP syndrome, uh, except just to sort of mention that it's a very different set of clinical symptoms in that it usually has, uh, is associated with falls early in the disease, difficulty with moving the eyes up and down, and, um, and uh, also a lot of stiffness, mostly in the body. And to complicate matters further, some of these people uh, who have cortical basal syndrome also have Alzheimer's pathology at autopsy. So because of this um, sort of complexity of these diseases in the field, what we decided to do a few years ago was to understand CBS and CBD at UCSF. And really the question was, if CBD is hard to predict during life, how can we better understand CBS and CBD so we can get a more accurate diagnosis? And you've heard the relevance of this already. So some CBS have CBD pathology. This is tau. Some CBS have PSP pathology, also tau. Some CBS have Alzheimer's disease pathology, both amyloid and tau. And so if you were to imagine a treatment, Dr. Bo when Dr. Boxer talks about these different drug treatments, we're really targeting the protein. So we're trying to get to figure out what the protein is uh, as early as possible so we can get the right drug to the right person. What we looked at was 18 patients with CBD pathology and to try and figure out, well, what various clinical syndromes do they have, and 40 patients with corticobasal syndrome to look at the pathology they have. And so here what we have are, uh, we had 18 people, people who had CBD and autopsy. And there were three different syndromes that we thought they had at their first visit to UCSF. So what this really means is that at their first visit to UCSF, about uh, five people here in blue had um, this non-fluent variant primary progressive aphasia. And the best way to think about this is that it's a progressive language disorder where you don't, we have difficulty with fluent speech. Um, it's very effortful. About seven people here in red had this executive motor syndrome, which is uh, a, a motor disease where there's um, difficulty with movement, falls, um, also executive dysfunction, which is um, kind of a classification of various cognitive functions. The best way to think about this is, if you think about what an executive does in a company, they plan, organize, multitask, it's not memory per se, and so these, are, um, uh, these patients had a lot of problems with executive function. Now the third major syndrome that we saw uh, that was caused by CBD um, was this uh, entity called behavioral variant frontotemporal dementia, which is a condition um, that Dr. Miller has really sort of pioneered the understanding of for, uh, throughout his career. And uh, it starts with early personality changes and not a lot of motor symptoms. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about each one of these to sort of show you what the experience is like for an individual. Um, people who have non-fluent aphasia due to CBD, they all seem to have first symptoms within the language domain. But as you can see here, so this is time zero for each of these symptoms. As you can see here, within each individual, other classes of symptoms uh, can emerge. So as um, Robin Riddle told you um, earlier, um, people can have uh, behavioral changes and motor symptoms occurring at different times throughout the disease. And some of these symptoms are spaced uh, on the scale of years apart. Now this executive motor syndrome that I talked about, a lot of them, these patients had uh, problems with uh, motor symptoms. So falls, slowed movement, problem using hands, slurred speech, the right foot didn't obey commands, gait changes, et cetera. And you can see that they also developed cognitive changes and behavioral changes at different time points during the disease. Now this behavioral variant FTD due to CBD um, was a little bit um, different in that actually these patients uh, did not meet criteria for corticobasal syndrome when they first came into UCSF, even though ultimately they ended up having CBD. Um, they had behavioral changes, that was kind of their earliest symptom, but then actually they also developed cognitive changes and motor changes late in the course of the disease. So here in this one person, personality change occurring at time zero, but then um, motor symptoms emerging as late as eight years after. So how can we understand this better? Well, when we get the brain scans, um, what we're really trying to understand is where in the brain the disease is, 
the degeneration is occurring. So what I'm showing you here is all those people who had CBD pathology in, my, in, in the study uh, that I just described to you, and what we can do is compare their brains to a group of controls to look at areas where the brain seems to be atrophied or to be shrinking. And I've sort of provided these sort of plain references to show you where the planes of sections are that we're looking at. Um, so uh, probably the easiest thing to look at down here is the sides of the brain. So you can really see that the front of the brain is affected, the frontal lobe here and the temporal lobe, both on the left and the right side. And this helps us understand where in the brain the degeneration is occurring. And if we look at each of those different um, clinical syndromes, I told you about the behavioral variant FTD, this executive motor syndrome, uh, the language variant, um, aphasia, uh, problems with aphasia. You know, all these people had CBD at pathology, but why is it they have such different symptoms at the beginning? Well, when we map each of these um, groups of um, syndromes onto the brain, you can see that even though there's overlap, they affect different parts of the brain. So for example, in red, you can see the behavioral variant affecting a lot of the front. Um, and we know that the frontal lobes are very important for social and emotional co um, cognition. And language is on the left side of the brain, so you can see that the language patients in yellow had atrophy all on the left side here. So it kind of makes sense and it can help us clue into why people have different symptoms um, even though they all have CD CBD. Now going to the other side, autopsy proven CBS, um, we had 40 patients with CBS at first USS UCSF visit and 35% had CBD pathology. And um, similarly, we have another um, AMP analysis here where all of these people had CB CBS and this first column was due to Alzheimer's disease, the second was due to CBD, and the third was due to PSP pathology. And just to kind of get an overall, there's a lot of little brains up here, but to get an overall picture, you can see that the areas of the brain affected are very different from each other. How can we understand this a little bit better? Well, finally, what we, we decided to look at was everybody kind of um, with the pathology of either CBD or PSP or other, other similar pathologies and compare them to people who had Alzheimer's pathology, even though all these people had the CBS at the bedside. You can see that in light blue, the people who had tau um, and also uh, the, the tau pathologies uh, more, were more in the front of the brain, and the people with the um, Alzheimer's pathology had uh, disease in the back of the brain, but there's this region of overlap in the purple here, um, which actually overlies a lot of the motor regions. So this explains how you can have a motor syndrome caused both by Alzheimer's disease and by tau disease. So hopefully what I've done is explain to you a little bit about how CBD really affects the frontal lobes resulting in a variety of clinical syndromes early in the disease. These can be a non-fluent aphasia, executive motor syndrome, behavioral variant FTD. Um, motor, cognitive, and behavioral changes emerge at different times in the disease course within individuals. You can also see it without early motor symptoms. And at UCSF, about, based on those numbers, about 35% of people with CBS had CBD pathology, 23% had Alzheimer's pathology, and 13 had PSP pathology. But I think that with amyloid PET imaging for Alzheimer's disease and tau PET imaging um, for CBD and PSP and other tau diseases like Dr. Rabinovich spoke about, we really have the potential to diagnose this protein correctly in at least 75% of CBS during life. So with that, I wanted to um, thank you very much for coming today. And none of this research would be possible without um, patients and families dedicating their time and uh, really sort of um, contributing to our efforts. So thank you very much.